Alrighty, welcome to the English language Inlang Pro AI tool. Um, this is a tool that you can use in your classrooms uh, as supplementary teaching or around the clock if some of your students need help. It's been heavily trained on the study design, lots of exemplars, a huge set of fantastic notes across 75 weeks. Um, and we're going to see how it works today. So starting off simple, uh, let's ask it, what are the functions of English language BCB? Right? And let's see how it responds to it. So, of course, there are six specific functions, and we only want those functions to be given to us. And it'll give us each function specific using both the study design as a source, as well as our notes as a source, and it'll go through all six. Now, let's say we want some help with meta language, right? So what is syntactic pattern? And let's see how it handles it. So deliberate repetition uh, or structuring of a sentence or pattern to create emphasis, rhythm, cohesion, or stylistic effect. And yeah, parallelism, antithesis, and listing are the three main ones, right? Now, Let's keep going. So let's ramp it up a little. I've got a, um, a transcript here. So it's a section B, so it's an analytical commentary. And I'm just going to pull across the text right? and get the screenshots going. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to ask it to please write me an analytical commentary. VCE English language on the following transcript. Right? Use a nice breadth of meta language um, and do not forget line numbers for your examples. Let's see what, how it handles it. So it's going to, of course, first um, transcribe the transcript to itself and effectively figure out okay. Um, this is what this transcript is about. These are the people speaking. Now let's get into describing what's going on. So in terms of the introduction, this transcript is drawn from the televised broadcast of the Royal Australian Navy Fleet. Absolutely. We've got these speakers. We've got the spoken mode with planned spoken discourse, public ceremonial context. Uh, the register is mentioned, alternating between formal and celebratory. And then we've got paragraphs based a little bit on subsystems, and a little bit on language examples. And if you feel like this isn't enough for you, then you can actually ask it to write another paragraph or an extension paragraph, right? So phonological features, the use of crescendo builds grandeur, right? And, and heightens the dramatic impact and thus supporting a poetic function, right? Um, and, and it even mentions identity. It talks about topic management. It talks about all different types of sentence types, all right? And, um, it is, of course, highly trained, as you can see. Now, what about essays? Let's think about how this tool might handle essays, right? So let, let's just go with, please write me a VCE English language essay. Just miscellaneously. Let's see how it handles it. And while we're there, let me just take a, a, a prompt, if I can find one. Um, and while that's loading, so it's saying, okay, let's say that the prompt is language change is always a reflection of society. Let's just go with that. Let's go with that prompt, right? Let's have a look. And of course, this tool is completely free to use. Um, alrighty, so language change is always a reflection of society discuss. As you can see, language is not static, but dynamic, adapting to cultural, social, and technological changes. It reflects our nation's evolving values. Um, you've got three full body paragraphs um, with a variety of examples. Um, not all of them can be 2025, but it acts as a great template to see, okay, even if there's an example from 2024, which is still quite recent, how do we look at it? How can we analyze it? What does it say about language or the way that society views language, right? Um, and finally, 
I want to have a look at short answer questions. Um, so if I, for example, open this document here, and let's take questions one and two. Let's drop them in. Now, these questions are about identifying verb tense or identifying prosodic features. And let's go down to the actual sample text that it needs to base its responses off. Fun fact, this was actually my real exam year. Um, so I have a lot of uh, memories with this exam. There we go. I'll pull this across. And I'll also pull this across. And now let's say, please first assess the short answer questions in the first image. And then answer them to the best of your ability with the transcript that is in the next three images. Let it up think. Step by step, a prosodic feature. It'll map out exactly what prosodic features are. Um, and it knows that it must one state the feature, give an example, and explain the function in context. And then identity with the verb frame with a, with a specific verb tense. So it knows to identify the tense, provide an example, and then link to a purpose, for example, right? So between, line, between lines 39 and 42, the allegro tempo is used. Line 42. What does it do? Creates urgency and excitement. Here, between lines 7 and 10, it knows to actually identify that the question is specifically asking for verb tenses between lines 7 and 10 and gives you an example in that sense, right in those parameters. Now, let's make it a bit more difficult. What about something like this 5 marker? How does it manage this 5 marker? Now, please answer this 5 mark question. Let's see how many examples it gives us sorry, how many examples it gives us um, and, and kind of how it manages those examples and, and outlines them for us. And just in case, so I like to be thorough by putting the transcript back into the chat box. Um, there we go. And there we go. Just to make it easier for it so it doesn't have to go searching um, back up in the chat. Let's ask it. Let's see how it handles this five mark question. Now, of course, as with all things, it might not be spotless and perfect, but it's pretty much the, the you know, the absolute pinnacle of how a program like this might be able to handle um, teaching a subject as nuanced as English language, right? So instantly it identifies discourse-related metalanguage from adjacency pairs to overlaps to discourse particles, turn-taking, phatic talk, topic management make sure to include line numbers, shows how features reflect relationships, whether it be casual, collaborative, humorous, or respectful. And it gives us lines 11, 12, 39, 40, 18, 63, 35, 47, and 68, oh, and 43. So 10 different lines as reference point for us to look at here. And even with a bit of a guide, as we've trained it on to understand what would actually score five out of five. Beautiful. So this is the englangpro.com, Englang Pro VCE English AI tool. Again, free to use. Make the absolute most use of it. Um, distribute it to your students. Um, and yeah, let's, let's supplement their teaching around the clock. Thank you.